Damian Moore here with American Crime Journal. Today's episode is the first in a series in which we unpack and break down Lynn Packer's most recent report in which he uncovers alleged crimes committed by Operation Underground Railroad, its CEO and founder Tim Ballard, and Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes. Now this first episode, we are going to be covering the whiteboard meeting. It is where Tim Ballard held a clandestine meeting in August of 2019, where he summons his most trusted associates in Operation Underground Railroad, in which he brought out a whiteboard that has become the center of the Davis County District Attorney's criminal investigation into Operation Underground Railroad, Tim Ballard, and Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes. Since Lynn Packer's video and ACJ's subsequent articles went public, there has been some interesting developments. Tim Ballard learned that the whiteboard meeting was going to be exposed by Lynn Packer. He immediately sent down a pipeline to make sure that it got to Mr. Packer and myself that if there's any mention of this whiteboard meeting, there would be hell to pay. Now, unfortunately for Mr. Ballard, we had already published not only Lynn Packer's video and the report, but my articles as well. But Tim Ballard did not only know that ACJ and Lynn Packer was going to be reporting this and taking it public, Tim Ballard learned for the first time that the Davis County District Attorney's criminal investigation included the meeting that occurred in August of 2019. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a major game changer. Should any portion of this whiteboard meeting be true, Tim Ballard is no longer looking at just a couple fraud charges that he can sprinkle some money on and make it go away. We are now talking about a criminal conspiracy, along with money laundering, racketeering, obstruction of justice, mail fraud, wire fraud, all sorts of fraud, no telling how many fraud cases could be brought against him. But much worse, it would introduce now federal investigation and charges, not only from like the FBI, but now from the IRS for tax evasion. Now, how did Ballard learn about Lynn Packer getting ready to port the whiteboard meeting? Well, folks, it's simple. Shortly before publication, Lynn Packer had sent out questions to OUR's attorney, Kurt McConkie, as well as Emily Evans, Tim Ballard's sister, who is also the public relations officer of Operation Underground Railroad, and asked them if they would like to comment on the meeting held in August of 2019, and Lynn Packer called it the whiteboard meeting, because it was at that meeting that Tim Ballard had presented the plan, the master plan for Operation Underground Railroad and several other of his nonprofits and how money would be getting moved around. And several of those in attendance were absolutely stunned and disgusted by this master plan. And this ultimately would lead to the breakup between OUR's main financer, millionaire Paul Hutchinson, as well as OUR ops team leader David Lopez. Here's Lynn Packer with the story. First, Ballard's secret plan. He unveiled it at a clandestine meeting in August 2019. It was a plan so secret that he asked the 10 or so people attending to sign confidentiality agreements. But now, 16 months later, at least one attendee turned a diagram of the plan over to Davis County investigators. They're conducting a criminal investigation into Operation Underground Railroad, its CEO Tim Ballard, 
and Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes. I reconstructed the chart from a diagram Ballard drew on a whiteboard during the meeting. The drawing shows multiple Ballard-controlled for-profit and non-profit entities, several paths for money to flow to Tim Ballard's main for-profit company, how OUR would bring more converts into the Mormon faith, a deeper involvement by the LDS Church's presiding apostle M. Russell Ballard than I had previously reported in Op-Ed 6, and OUR's takeover of an orphanage in Haiti in an apparent attempt to monetize adoptions. Ballard wanted to make millions. His nonprofit Operation Underground Railroad has millions of dollars in the bank. But he cannot simply write checks to himself at the risk of losing tax-exempt status. He had already taken his annual salary above $300,000 in 2018 before backing off that approach. One solution? Surround that nonprofit with other nonprofits and for-profits in a complex labyrinth of entities where money would eventually flow into his personal bank account. A bonus, the same publicity sizzle, that is what he called sizzle on his chart, that generates donations and profits could bring masses of people into the Mormon church. It was his capitalism begets church converts plan. At the top of the diagram, Slave Stealers LLC with three partners, Brian Norton, Tim Ballard, and LDS Apostle Russell Ballard as a silent partner. An outside nonprofit run by former OUR operative Paul Hutchinson was envisioned to donate to multiple entities. Ballard's use of the word sizzle was taken to mean that the nonprofits would attract donors by way of dynamic humanitarian missions, such as rescuing child sex slaves. Money would end up in Ballard's own company that would make more money with a new movie his speaking engagements, upcoming books, and some of that would go back to Slave Stealers, LLC. In this episode, I'll focus on three entities shown on the chart. Slave Stealers, the Haiti Orphanage, and Children Need Families Foundation. OUR appears to have taken at least partial control of a Haitian orphanage that has been mismanaged by Gesno Marty. More about that in a few minutes. The second whiteboard entity I'll put under the microscope is one Tim Ballard and his wife Catherine formed. They installed Janet Russon from Utah County as its director. Even though they called it a nonprofit, it has not been registered with the IRS. I'll begin with a look at the for-profit entity at the top of Ballard's whiteboard sketch, Slave Stealers, LLC. He claimed the Mormon Church's top apostle, Russell Ballard, is a silent partner. Video Op-Ed 6 dealt with the Covenant controversy and Russell Ballard's support of Tim Ballard's Slave Stealer book. Here Russell Ballard is pictured with Glenn Beck and Tim Ballard. Tim Ballard at the whiteboard meeting implied that Russell Ballard also has a financial interest in the book's spin-off, a proposed television series, also called Slave Stealers. Slave Stealers has a Farmington, Utah office address. It's the business address for Brad Brower, Russell Ballard's son-in-law. Brower and Russell Ballard declined interviews. Melissa Ballard, Russell Ballard's daughter-in-law, is a state representative. She's seen here on the right with her husband, Craig, and Jessica Mass, OUR's aftercare director, at a fundraiser event. She plugged OUR on her website by passing along Ballard's unproven and false fundraising pitches. She wrote, Amazing night for Operation Underground Railroad. In just five years, they went from saving 260 kids in a year to more than 1,200 kids this year from slavery. The most stunning statistic tonight Two million African slaves were taken over 400 years. Today, there are more than 40 million slaves. Slave Stealers, an existing book and a planned TV series. According to a press release, the proposed series designed to cast a light on slavery past and present is currently in development. 
says Emmy-winning Nick Nanton is producing alongside Brian Norton and Ballard through their Stowaway Productions and Eighth Wonder Entertainment. And it says Ballard's Operation Underground Railroad, the nonprofit set up to combat human trafficking, is also involved. There are two slave stealers related entities not on Ballard's chart. One is 11th Street Films, LLC, and Stowaway Productions, LLC. Both are registered by Tim Ballard and associated with Nick Nanton, who directed the movie Operation Toussaint. What is not clear, where is the financing coming from? And when will production begin, if ever? Slave Stealers is also connected to Ballard's very recently released Sound of Freedom movie. The release of that movie had already been delayed by more than two years. It looks like no theater chain or streaming service like Netflix wanted it. Now its March 2021 release is by a small obscure streaming outlet and advertised for free and can be accessed via YouTube. Slave Stealers partner Brian Norton is also involved with two OUR-related St. George Area Firearms Training Centers, Fort Pierce Tactical Ranch and Salvo LLC. Norton is also rumored to be paying Ballard $900,000 a year for his piece of the whiteboard pie. Next up on Ballard's whiteboard chart, the purported nonprofit entity Children Need Families, founded by Tim Ballard's wife, Catherine, and headed by Janet Russon. CNF's business address is Janet Russon's home in Provo. Russon is the foundation's executive director. Board members are Tim Ballard, Catherine Ballard, and Tevia Ware, Catherine's sister. Ware is also OUR CFO and is paid about $100,000 a year. Although CNF claims to be a nonprofit, it is not registered with the IRS or Utah as required of nonprofits. It apparently provides donor tax deductions through OUR. In any event, there are no annual IRS reports. That severely limits what donors and taxpayers know about the entity that Tim Ballard put on his whiteboard chart along with the word sizzle. Brent Andrewson, OUR's nonprofit attorney, declined explaining if an entity can claim to be a nonprofit and solicit donations without being registered with the IRS. CNF is not Russin's first OUR-related charity involvement. Her now-defunct Little Fish Foundation once raised money for Gesno Marty's orphanage in Haiti. Her charity is not registered with the IRS, but she may have paid taxes, and donors might not have claimed tax deductions, so it may have been legal. It appears she did continue operating the charity after its Utah's corporate registration expired eight years ago. Russin has a lot of OUR-related Facebook friends. Reason 4, OUR ousted its main financial and operational supporter, millionaire Paul Hutchinson. Before the falling out, he would pop up everywhere in connection with OUR events and missions. Here he is with Sean Reyes, again with Reyes. Here Reyes gives him a child sex trafficking award. Uh, here he is with uh, Tony Robbins, another millionaire OUR rainmaker. And in 2018, when Hutchinson and Ballard were on better terms, they appeared together at a gala at Universal Studios Hollywood. I'll, I'll put it this way. I, ha I had a little thing on my wall when I was a kid. It had a bunch of Ferraris, Lamborghinis. It said, he who has the most toys wins. Oh. Now, my, now my quote is, he who has a powerful, positive impact in the most lives wins. Wow. In fact, I want to introduce you to somebody. I, I am, uh, I'm the co-founder of Child Liberation Foundation. It focuses on helping eradicate child slavery worldwide. And, and I know it's a dark subject, but some of the guys that I'm going to introduce you to are guys who have physically gone in and pulled out children from the darkest places on earth who were abducted. And 
So Tim Ballard was a, he was CIA and then Homeland Security for 14 years over child trafficking, and and has made us. In, in my opinion, more than anybody else I have ever known of, in terms of of, of creating awareness and and a, a real positive change to something that is such a dark subject. Hutchinson believes Ballard makes up a lot of OUR's achievements. He's now setting up a rival child rescue organization. He says Ballard has a savior complex, perhaps seeing himself as a reincarnated Joseph Smith. Dave Lopez, who is an OUR Ops team leader and who is thought to be a Hutchinson ally, is also gone. Early in OUR's life, he appeared with Ballard on Glenn Beck's broadcast, and here he's seen with Ballard and former NFL star and OUR booster Steve Young. Lopez, a former Navy SEAL, led multiple OUR operations in Haiti. He left OUR, may be cooperating with the criminal probe, and he's now sales director for Hutchinson's ATEC Defense Systems. And, besides, is developing a claimed multi-billion dollar resort on an island off Haiti. Lopez's proposed resort would be on Ilavash Island off Haiti. He claims, This project is going to revitalize the tourism industry of Haiti and stimulate the local economy in a massive way. On top of that, a huge percentage of the profits will be allocated to fight human trafficking in Haiti. However, Tim Ballard is said to have wanted his cut. Ballard purportedly said, The fact that you got those relationships through OUR, you need to give me 50% of your ownership in that entire company. This is what God wants. <laughs> 